Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm gonna show you how I made a Lego cake slice cake. This cake is inspired by Chris McVeigh. He's an artist who makes sculptures out of Legos, and he actually made one of a cake slice. So I wanted to make my own version, but instead of using Legos, I'm using edible materials, and I'm making a cake that looks like Legos. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel. We put out new cake tutorials every Monday. We also have Patreon, where we post and we chat about what we're up to behind the scenes. So you can become a patron at patreon.com slash sidesurfcakes. So let's get started. Let's start with some chocolate cake. So I already have this cut into a triangular shape. So I have my layer of chocolate cake, layer of chocolate ganache, and then another layer of chocolate cake. I put this in the fridge so that the top layer doesn't start sliding as I ice it. So here I'm adding that crumb coat, I'm icing the cake, and I wanna cover the entire thing in chocolate ganache. Then I go in with a smoother, I go around, make sure your sides are smooth. They don't have to be perfect, we're just going to cover this, but you want the basic triangular shape. Next comes a layer of modeling chocolate. So this isn't fondant, you could use fondant, I'm very comfortable with modeling chocolate and I really like the way it tastes, so I went with modeling chocolate for this. So I covered the back of the cake, then I add a little bit of water with a paintbrush, and I'm layering up three sheets. Then I trim away the excess chocolate. So that's my second. You can see I'm using an X-Acto blade and I'm actually like measuring with it. You could definitely use a ruler and do actual measurements. <laughs> I just like to use my tools because I find it to be very quick. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to add the sides. So the first way I added the white strip and then I added the brown chocolate underneath it and above it. You can just take a smoother, push it down, make sure everything is sealed and there's no gap between the chocolate. Then I add the top layer of brown modeling chocolate. And again, I'm just smoothing it out, trimming it a little bit, making sure that it's nice and flat. Now the other way to create the side is to actually make it off of the cake and then place it on. So again, I have that layer of white, which is gonna represent the icing, then a brown layer on the top and bottom. Then you just take it and you place it right on the cake. Either way works. I think that it's slightly easier to create that layer off the cake, but honestly, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Next is the top layer of white icing. This is modeling chocolate. What I like to do is I place it on top and then I trim it away to match up with the cake. This is the easiest way to do it for me. Then comes the little dots. This is modeling chocolate scraps I had left over. And I'm just going in with a toothpick and I'm marking where I want each of these dots to be. To cut out these little circles, I actually used a round piping tip. So typically a round piping tip would be what you'd use to pipe buttercream borders on your cakes. But that tip actually makes for a very good circle cutter, especially if you need it real tiny. It's really nice to mark out where you want them to be rather than just placing them on directly. That way you know they're nice and even. You really wanna make sure that your dots line up. That's the key. I really like this part of the cake. It's probably my favorite part, all these little dots. Next, I cut out a circle, and then I go in and add my little circles. So this is as if I piped, you know, a bit of icing on top of the cake. So I did two circles with small dots on top. Then I'm gonna add some dots on the triangle. 
And this is like a beaded border almost. Like uh, you pipe icing and you create a little border. So that's what I'm doing with these dots. I'm just replicating what a slice of cake might look like. They're funny because they're a little difficult to handle. Not impossible, but since they're so small, they're kind of sticky and you gotta be careful and take your time with it. Next, I rolled out some modeling chocolate in pink and I have four squares and then little circles on top of the squares. This is as if I were to pipe on some pink icing. I'm also going to add some of these pink squares on the bottom. So it's as if there was a pink border around the base of the cake. I got my squares on and then my little dots. Honestly, the repetition of the dots are what makes this cake. It looks so cool. Next, I went in with a blade and I scored the sides of the brown chocolate. And this is supposed to represent, like when you look at Lego stacked from the side, you can see that really thin line that shows you each individual Lego. Finally, I'm taking the pink, I'm rolling it out, and I'm going to make this my candle. Place it on top. I didn't have to use anything. It stayed up, and there you have it. A slice of cake. Lego cake? Is that how you'd say it? <laughs> I love the way this cut. It's so clean and smooth. Delicious.